What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome on back to our Pokemon Ruby walkthrough. In the last part, we finished up Route 102, met our dad for the first time in the game, showed a little newbie, Wally, how to catch Pokemon, and then we made our way here through the Petalburg Woods, and yeah, now we are moving on out of the woods into the north side of Route 104, and yeah, this will lead us to... Rustboro City. So first of all, talk to the man that you see immediately to the left as he will give you Team 09 Bullet Seed. A, you know, somewhat good grass time move for this point in the game. It's one of those moves that can hit two to five times, but you know, it'll eventually kind of die out. Um, also, here's some berries to pick up, and there's a bunch of berries around here because we are right by the flower shop. And, um, there's, I believe, a random berry that you can get every day from one of the uh, younger girls and oh, I guess I should probably say yes to that because I'm pretty sure this lady will give us the little water pail that you need to um, sprout berries after you know picking them and planting them again but let's see oh no never mind okay you just told me about berries great all right is it you yeah there we go we get the whalemer pail okay so yeah if you do want to replant berries after you pick them, then you can use that pail and they will grow quicker. Now, the lady down here is, um, I guess the younger sister, and every day she will give you a random berry, so she's probably, like, the most useful person in this building. Um, however, once you receive the third gym badge, there's a couple of more things that you can get in here. Not sure if I'll actually take the time to come back and get them, because they're nothing crazy, but, hey, I thought I might as well mention it. Now, just behind the building is some more grass, and I'm not going to list off the wild Pokemon you can get here because I already did that with the south part of Route 104 in the last episode. However, you can already tell there's a lot of hidden items that can be picked up here, like that Pokeball, and this potion, I guess, is not a hidden item. But yeah, there's just a bunch of these little empty patches of grass that clearly are hiding something. There's a super potion, and another wild Pokemon. Come on, man! I'm just trying to get through the route. The goal in this video is to get through the rest of Route 104, explore Rustboro City a bit, and then move on to Route 116, which is an optional route at this point right now because you can't take on the gym as soon as you get to Rustboro. But I think I do need the uh, extra training, so I'm going to fight the trainers there and then probably call it a day. But, oh my gosh, seriously, last patch of grass. Oh, yay, I guess we're seeing a Wingle for the first time. At least I think it's the first time in this walkthrough. Man, all right, let's move on out of the grass. Luckily, there's none um, up ahead as you'd, uh, you just cross like a bridge. However, there are some more trainers, and unfortunately, we have more of those rich people. We saw in the last episode that guy used like a full restore on his Zigzagoon. Yeah, this lady will do the exact same thing. Let's see if Wally can maybe take it down quick enough. I highly doubt it because... We are still only level 8, but, you know, it'd be cool if we could. Okay, a 3-shot. Um, actually, now that I think about it, that will knock her into healing range, won't it? Ah, oh, man, you just gotta love these trainers. See, there you go. Just in case you didn't believe me or something, I don't know. Man, these people are annoying. Um, I do believe that some of them will rematch you. Um, yeah, this lady will rematch you a bit later with the PokéNav feature, and there's also a lass up ahead that will rematch you a few times. So, yeah, just in case you were wondering about that. Finally, we are going to finish off the Zigzagoon, though, and, yeah, move on along to the next trainer, which, as I just said, is that lass. So, let's do it. She is waiting for us right down here. She's got some pretty good eyesight to see us from that far away. All right, that was easy enough. She just had a Lotad and a Shroomish. I did have to heal up Ralts though. He took a big hit from Astonish from that Lotad. Anyways, right here's a tree that we can't cut down yet, so don't worry about it. And right here is a pretty cool fight that you don't have to do because as you saw, I just ran by these two twins. However, at the time that this game came out and my boy JD, which if you don't know is my dog, he is scratching at the door right now. I mean, seriously, I'm trying to record a very important video of the Pokemon Ruby walkthrough. Anyways, let me at least get through this battle first. But yeah, as I was saying, at the time of this game's release, this was the very first double battle ever in a Pokemon game, at least to my knowledge. So yeah, this was kind of a monumental battle, believe it or not. 
Um, they have the two version exclusive mods, the Lotad and C Dot. And there's another Astonish. Luckily, this is a Lotad. I don't know. I guess he's weaker than the other one. Um, and now that we knocked out the C Dot, we can double team the Lotad and knock this man out. And I really don't want to have to do another jump cut to go let my dog into the room. So let's see if he just kind of walks away. That probably won't happen. Um, anyways, moving on along, we have one more trainer to battle, which is a fisherman who's kind of just vibing here right at the end of this bridge, and he's got three mons, and I'm pretty sure they're all Magikarps. As I said, they were all Magikarps, all at level 6. Ralts did get up to level 10 right there as we pick up these final two berries. And yeah, I think this old lady might give us something. I might be remembering that wrong. Let's see, she might just be going on about some nonsense. If you see berries growing in Lomi, yeah, 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 berries, berries, berries. Hey, she does give us a Chesto Berry. All right, sweet. Also, look at the reflections on the water. I think that was a uh, pretty cool um, little neat feature in these games because it's kind of the first time they did that. Now, before we get into the actual Rustboro City, we're going to head along the edge of this fence and pick up and uh, X-Defend. So, yeah, that is, you know, sitting right there for you. And now it's time to head into the city itself. So, there's a bunch of items that you can get here overall in the game. There's only some that you can get um, right now at this point. Others, you know, you'll have to do some events for um, and deliver some items. But for now, let's go to the first building on the left and talk to this little boy. Because he will give you a Premier Ball. Um, yeah, apparently his dad made it from the Devon Corporation. And you'll come to find out that... The Devon Corporation, their offices are actually here in Rustboro City, and they're basically like the Sylph Co. of the Hoenn region. They invent, you know, all the latest and greatest things. That's eventually where you're going to get, like, the Pokénav from and stuff. Let's go ahead and heal up, though. And I, as I said earlier, we're not taking on the gym in this episode. I think that'll be in tomorrow's video. But we will go ahead and grab everything we can at this point. So, right next to the Pokémon Center is the Cutter's House, and... As the name implies, this man at the table will give you the HM for cut. Now, keep in mind, you won't be able to use it outside of battle until you beat um, Roxanne, the first gym leader. So, yeah, but, um, you know, it's, what, a 50 base power normal type move. You guys know what cut is. It's not the greatest. I'll probably catch some kind of HM Pokemon to teach it to. Now, just to the northeast of the Pokemon Center is the trainer school, and the only person you want to talk to in here is... The gentleman who is actually the teacher he'll like go around and check what the students are doing or something and then he will give you the quick claw a very nice held item I think it's what like a 10 or 15 percent chance that your Pokemon moves first in battle I just had to like hiccup there but it didn't really come out um anyways nothing behind the house we have covered just about all the items there are to get right now um just to the north of the, tra of the trainer school is the gym to the left of that is the devon corporation there's nothing you know we can really do in there um up north though is route 115 and you can't get to that part just yet because you actually have to come from an exit at the meteor falls but what you can do is run around on the beach and grab a free super potion also, one more thing about Rustboro City, there's a trade that you can do back in there, and you can give a guy a Slack Off, and in return he will give you a Makuhita. Now that is a fighting type Pokemon that can be caught relatively soon in the game anyways, but it could definitely help you out if you're struggling with the first gym, and um, keep in mind it being a traded Pokemon, you know, it'll gain a boosted amount of experience points however it might also disobey you depending on how many badges you have anyways let's move on to route 116 which you'll have to come through this route anyways after the gym but i'm gonna go ahead and do a good chunk of it here in this episode because i think i need the extra training before we take on the first gym leader so yeah there's a good amount of trainers here there's a little section of the route that you can't get to unless you have cut um speaking of Pokemon, though, since we were just talking about Makuhita, the new Pokemon you can find here are Skitty, Ninkata, and Whismur. If you're looking for a normal type, I would definitely recommend Whismur over, uh, sorry, not Ninkata, over Skitty, because Whismur's just better, it'll eventually become an Exploud. Skitty and Delcaddy just are nowhere near as strong. 
Ninkata is kind of a weird, a weird bug type Pokemon. It's bug ground, but at level 20, it'll evolve into a Ninjask, which is bug flying. However, if you have an open slot in your party when it evolves, it'll also become a um, Shed Ninja. Or, well, a Shed Ninja will just appear in your party as well. And that's, you know, the good old bug ghost type, but it has one guard, but it has, like, one hit point at all times. So, definitely not ideal for, you know, a chill playthrough of the game. But I think the bug ghost type is pretty cool. It does leave a lot of weaknesses, though, like ghost and fire and flying and dark. So the Wonder Guard ability can easily be uh, worked around. For now, let's pick up this Repel, and I should really get myself some Repels. I think in Rustboro City you can start to buy some. So yeah, I need to rem rem uh, remember to stock up on some of those. But let's move on to Mr. Bugcatcher Jose. Alright, Ralts got up to level 11, which officially caught him up with Torchic, but then Torchic got up to level 12, so... Yeah, looks like we are keeping Ralts out front, which is fine by me. I mean, you know, it's I'm glad to be using a Ralts. It's not too bad. Right here, though, this lady has a Meryl. Shout out to Maryland that I used in the Pokemon Silver walkthrough. Our good old Meryl, which became an Azumarill and became one of our better team members. So, yeah. Also, because we got to level 11, we got double team. Now, if you don't know me, I'm not the biggest fan of, like, double team and sand attack. But if there's a battle where we have to end up using double team, then I will. If it means, you know, we got to use it to win. But, um, yeah, hopefully we don't have to use it very often because it's kind of just a cheap way to go out, if you know what I mean. I feel like a lot of people will agree on that. Um, down it goes the Meryl, though. And we only have one more guy to battle until we reach basically the end of the route. Now... Just above us, you can see, like, the ledges, and you can only access that section through cut. There's really just some more trainers and items to pick up up there. And I will do that probably in the next episode after we defeat the gym leader. But let's go ahead and take on Mr. Hiker right here, guarding the entrance to the upcoming cave, which we will have to go into very soon. I'm not going to do it just yet because there's a little um, side event or whatever you want to call it that happens after the gym but um yeah let's just destroy this man's geodudes who are actually going to do a good amount of damage to us with tackle again wally's defense is just not the best he definitely thrives more in special defense and special attack but that is a-okay it's fine we're gonna get through it maybe they'll be dumb and just go for like defense curl okay maybe not i think though as long as this last geodude is also level eight we should be able to live with a 1 HP, which is going to be hype. So screw it. I'm going to risk it. Not even going to heal. Why not have some fun to end off part number three? Let's see. Are we going to be able to survive the tackle? Come on, Wally. Oh, with two hit points. Yo, he had that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes, sir. All right. And we get up to level 12 in the process. That is very nice. I think there's still two more items we can get up here. I don't think they're hidden, so I should easily be able to find them. Let's put Lido up front. Um, right here is the Tunneler's Rest House. I don't think there's really anything of note um, here, so yeah, you don't really got to worry about that. Let's go ahead and climb up here and pick up an X Special. And I believe the Super Potion actually requires um, Cut, so we'll grab that later. But for now, that leads us to the Rust Earth Tunnel, which as I just said, we won't check out until the next episode. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed part number three. Have a great rest of your day, and until next time, deuces!